good evening today i want to discuss one of the books i read which has been a big influence in my life some say it's a wicked book but some say it's a great book i think it's a great book it opened my eyes and several times when i have fallen in life is it because some of these laws are being violated and if you violate these laws you will pay the price very quickly we are not going to discuss all the 48 laws in that book but whatever we pick and choose the idea is that you go and get to read this book there at there are some times when you will find two laws contradict with each other but you these are this is not science this is social science where you will have to manage and navigate these difficult times i hope you enjoy this podcast that we have put together okay so let's talk about the first this guy robert green when was the first time you read his book robert green i think i started too late in life i think you you gave me the book and it was lying in my shelf for a long time i didn't really read it though i glanced through it when uh, i think i was about 43 or 44 uh, shashwat ji sent me a youtube link and then i started looking at it and then i realized the power of youtube and then when that happened i first listened to a full online version of it that is a audio youtube book. audio book and then came back and looked at this book and then the most interesting thing is i gave it to sashikant sendhil sendhil said this is bad and he took it and he said i said read it for me but he said no he will not and then he skipped that book with him i also asked mohan to read this book he enjoyed it so what is the thing which is so controversial about this book since you have read the book and why is it so polarizing what's about this book which is creating this kind of a feeling either you love it or people hate it people either think it's great or people think it's evil because and some prisons have even banned this book no i'll tell you why this book is so controversial the book is very controversial because it we like to believe we are all nice people in in one of these uh, uh, laws he talks about the hollywood directors where he was working and we he says that we think we are all nice people that i am a nice guy the impression is that i am a nice guy you are my brother so you you know me in and out you know that i am not a very nice guy but we all keep a social veneer and a social image but beyond the insight that in all our careers we are busy plotting and uh, doing things we are like the courtiers of a king who are trying to maneuver each other out maneuver each other and become the most popular uh, courtier of the king but in my case i never had to work anywhere but i had to manage relationships in corporates and banks where if i had known these laws i would have managed it better i wouldn't have struggled so much yeah but the biggest thing which they say the problem with this book okay. is it t- tells you encourages you to manipulate the situation and manipulate people is it wrong to manipulate and influence someone to get what you want no it doesn't talk about manipulation hmm. that's a wrong word it's a it's a word that uh, people who believe that we only do nice things in life say that he says when a group of people are working together if you are not going to manipulate or if you are not going to maneuver the situation somebody else is going to maneuver the situation and you are going to be at the receiving end repeatedly in life i have been at the receiving end and if you don't know how to play this game you will be manipulated and you will become a common enemy the worst thing that happened to me is when i got into a jam i had to uh, source a material from a man who used to work for me and he asked me i created him i paid his salary for years he turned around and asked me are you credit worthy can you pay this money back now that is i had not manipulated him i had taught him everything i knew but when the situation came when he said are you credit worthy and will you pay that is the time and it was a 10000 rupee product we are talking about that's the time when i could look back and that is the time when it uh, hit me of course we turned it round and uh, from almost empty tank we recovered everything and uh, we came back to where we were and became even more wealthier but i was there at the nadir point which you remember about 15 or 20 years back right when i was right. 36 or yes. maybe less than that but it was at our worst point in our life when we were jacked up at all locked up at all places and correct and you were correct now had i known those laws i wouldn't have got to a point where i got out money what like this 
So you may not, if when you live like, when you want to live in Rome, you have to act like a Roman. You cannot live in Rome and act like a saint. True. I agree on that. Anyway, let's dive into some of these laws and see what they are all about. The first law, what he talks about is called never outshine the master. Yeah. He says, always make those you feel comfortable, or always make those above you feel comfortable, at least superior. Mm. In your desire to please or impress them, don't go too far in displaying your talents or you might accomplishments in the opposite and inspire fear and insecurity. Make your masters appear more brilliant than they are and you will attain heights of power. So basically he's saying you must suck up to your boss. Is that right? That's using an us, but that's the truth. Your boss decides where you go to be. The most important thing is, uh, this I can show you two examples where it didn't work. One is the famous story of Lee Ayakaka and Henry IV. Henry IV the third, I think, or the Henry IV the second. Henry IV the second was the grandson of the original Ford. If you have been following Ford Motor Company, the structure of Ford Company is the Ford Company owner, Ford family still controls the Ford Motor Company. They have not sold out. They were the first to use this differential voting shares to keep control of the company. If you know this, what I am talking about. Correct. So, Ayakaka launched Ford Mustang and he thought he had done extraordinary things and he deserves to be the CEO. And he ruffled the feathers of Henry Ford sometime. And he, Henry Ford felt that uh, this was not right. So one fine Monday, it, Ayaka, Henry Ford bought Ayakaka out, showed him on top of the building and said, read that. And it said Ford Motor Company. And he asked him, what's my name? He said, Henry Ford. So that, and that was the end of Ayakaka. Ayakaka went to Chrysler, turned it around. Correct. Back then, Chrysler got into trouble again. Ayokaka is forgotten today. Correct. The Fords are not forgotten. Correct. Now, I have to give you another example. Is the fight between Ratan Tata and Cyrus Mistri. Mm. Explain that a little bit more in this context. See, Ratan Tata and Cyrus Mistri come from old Parsi families. Correct. Okay. The Mistris were contractors to Ratan Tata's family. Twice it has happened. Behind J.R.D. Tata's back, the mystery family acquired stock. At one point, his sister shares of 6 or 7%. He, Jayadi Tata himself, got it and gave it to Mystery's father. Jayadi had a brother called Jimmy Tata. And Jimmy Tata, Jimmy Tata in turn, hmm. sold uh, his stake to spite his brother Jayadi. And 10% of Tata Sons was bought by Mystery's father. And J.R.D. was very upset by that. So there was always, and at that time, because of current regulations, there was a time when Tata's had less stock than the mysteries. So it was a very tough relationship. But J.R.D. had the stature to counter. And Ratan Tata was always waiting for a chance at that point of time. But the relationship when, uh, what happened is, mystery's daughter married Neol's brother. And the relationship strengthened. And uh, when the TCS company became public, Ratan Tata took some complete control of Tata and Sons after that by giving them extra facilities. And he was so impressed by Cyrus, he thought he would be his son, whom he never had. Like he handed JRD J. R. handed over Correct. to him. He wanted to hand it over to him. Yes. But Cyrus's mistake was Ratan Tata's dream car. He had succeeded in everything he had done. He didn't share the vision of Tata. No, no, I, I won't say vision. Mm. We don't want to judge whether Cyrus is right or Ratan is right. Fair enough. Ratan wanted to build a one lakh car. Correct. Now, nobody tells the emperor that his project is wrong. True. So, you don't want to be the one to tell the emperor that Nano is a failure. The emperor knows it himself. You don't have to rub it in. That is one. Second, Cyrus wanted to handle Dokumo, Tata Dokumo in certain day. He wanted to tell Dokumo, no, I cannot pay you the money. Thank you very much. Correct. But Tata felt that he had given his word. Correct. Dokumo had to be paid. These are two public flashpoints which happened. Nobody knows. 